Hello and welcome to the next video of my LPL 2024 preview series where we're going to cover Invictus Gaming, otherwise known as IG. Uh, the last few years have been tough for them um, as they've tried to rebuild their roster and um, you know try and get some semblance of what they had in the late 2010s once again. In 2021, they went 15 and 17 in the regular season domestically. Then in 22, would go 10 wins, 22 losses. And last year, 13 and 19. So slightly better from 2022 to 2023. And I think we can see why. Um, I thought in summer they really invested the right way. In spring, they had Gideon and Dove in uh, jungle and mid, a Korean duo. And I just thought that it left a lot to be desired on paper going into it. And even then, it um, looked like it. Now, in summer, they brought in Cryan and then signed, uh, well, didn't, signed Cryan and promoted Tianzin. And Tianzin is one of the better uh, LDL prospects in the jungle, and it, it was a good move. So we're going to talk about them in a second. The only moves by this team... Um, we're allowing Dove to leave. So Dove went to Dignitas. He's playing mid lane. And then they didn't add anybody. The average age of this roster is 21.4 years old. In top lane, we have YSKM, who looked very good for the majority of last year. However, he put a lot of pressure on himself, playing solo queue for a crazy amount of hours, drinking a lot of energy drinks, from what I understand, and gave himself heart problems. And actually had to go to the hospital and take a couple weeks off. And he, he never was the same after that, in my opinion. And I do wonder if his practice habits and having to change them altered how good he is. And people might say, yeah, but, you know, he'll figure it out. And it's true. He 100% should be able to figure it out. I'm just saying what got him there, he no longer can do, if that makes sense. Those practice habits and, and, and the crazy amount of solo queue he was pulling off. 19 years old, 60 games played, 2-6 KDA, 8-1 CS per minute, 52-9 KP. Had uh, a lot of solo kills in the top lane. Um, we don't have those stats. That's just me saying that he, he had a lot. 21.9 gold share, 473 damage per minute, 21.9 damage share. 10 champions played. Fiora, Jax, Camille accounting for 58% of his games played. He definitely is more suited for the finesse champions. Solo dolo on an island. Young player, sometimes they're very meta-dependent and they can only offer one style of play and over time they just have to improve and learn how to play other things to offer the team more options. His numbers are pretty standard with other rookie tops if you missed my rookie top laner video from a couple weeks ago. Behind him they have Wen. Uh, he played 90 games last year. Some of these, I mean, very few are LPL games. He did have a, a couple games on the big team. 90 games, 2.5 KDA, 7.6 CS per minute, 55.2 KP, 20.9 gold share, 5.31 damage per minute, 14 champions played. He is not ready for the LPL. He struggled at times. Um, the gang plank was a nice pick, allowed him to deal a lot of damage, but in the end, I thought he was out of a fish out of water. They also have Nenny. He played last year with the LPL roster. However, he played a lot of mid lane. That was when they were waiting for Dove to come over from Korea, visa issues and things like that. And it kind of affected his numbers. And he didn't play that many other games when was their LDL top. So Nenny was just a, a substitute that didn't play at all, really. So 20 years old, uh, a player that we saw a couple years ago that who knows if they're going to get an opportunity this year. Arbo played with the LDL team also, 41 games, 2.8 KDA, 7.6 CS per minute, 54 KP, 20 gold share, 371 damage per minute, 11 champions played, so definitely um, less resource heavy than when. And then they have Zwan, or yeah, Zwan in top lane, age unknown, no stats, so they have five top laners on their depth chart right now. And it's kind of crazy because they don't have a mid laner that has any stats behind Cryon. So one could argue maybe you should. This is why trades and things need to happen more in LOL esports because it's like, hey, why don't you trade Nenny to somewhere where they have a few mid laners that they don't know what to do with and, and, and make a deal. So just something to think about. Tianzin, 19 years old. Uh, Rengar, one trick if I recall. 
29 games, 2.6 KDA, 5.4 CS per minute, 67.8 KP. 18.5 gold share, 292 damage per minute, 14 damage share. Nine champions played. Vi, Rengar, Nocturne, accounting for 69%. Um, the Nocturne was a big pick for them when they started to put a couple um, series together towards the end of 2023. And a team that going into next, this upcoming season in 2024, people are high on them. I've seen people have them as high as sixth in their power rankings, which is pretty high, to be quite honest with you. Um, there's a lot of potential, but at the same time, I think we need to temper expectations and see if that was meta-dependent and, and things of that nature. Um, but that's you know that top side of the rift is a fun one. I am interested to see how much better it gets over the split. Um, Liewire is the backup, 75 games, 2.7 KDA, 5.3 CS per minute, 70.9 KP, 19 gold share, 331 damage per minute, 12 champions played, not ready to put pressure and teams in for any games. Cryon, 23 years old, 36 games, 3-3 KDA, 7-9 CS per minute, 65-3 KP. Left a lot to be desired in summer. Um, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, like I said, a lot of folks think IG are a team to look for, and I think they are too. Cryon has to play better, though. These numbers are, are dog water, and frankly, he didn't look super great when he played anyways. Um, very low resource. 21 gold share, 573 damage per minute, 277 damage share. Now that's redeeming. Not a lot of gold, but still dealt a ton of damage, almost the most on the team. He and Wink, sorry, he and On carrying in that department, but only six champions played in 36 games. That's insane that he is somehow able to get away with that. Ari, Annie, and Nico accounting for 30 of those 36 games. Talk about a champion drop. Nine Fog is the backup. No games played. Age unknown. 80 Carry is on at 20 years old. 22 years old. Had 70 games played. 3-4 KDA. 9-5 CS per minute. 70 KP. 25 gold share. 608 damage per minute, which led the team with 28.3% of damage. 13 champions played Aphelios, Draven, and Zaya, accounting for 47%. Um, on and Wink looked pretty good. Wink is still getting the uh, support role under control. He is a former AD carry only a couple years ago. And going into 2024, I think that excuse drops off. You need to now be able to play support and be criticized as if you have been playing support for the last couple of years because that's the case. Um Keeping this duo together, I think it was an interesting one. In spring, when the AD carry support meta was a thing, like Wink was able to really pop off in that in that regard. Um, and with those ranged picks and things like that, that was something that really gave this team some pop. Zhao Yuji, 21 years old, the backup. I think he's excellent. I think he should be getting an opportunity at the LPL level. Um, 53 games, 5-9 KDA, 10-1 CS per minute, 72-7 KP. And get this, 26.5% of the team's gold. That is so freaking high. Talk about a 1v9 angle. 671 damage per minute, 9 champions played. And then you have Hashisora, Hashisora, um, or Hoshisora, I don't know. Also high resource. In 20 games, had a 4-3 KDA, 9-3 CS per minute, 71 KP. But a 25.6 gold share. So didn't get a ton of farm, but somehow got all the gold from the kills. 696 damage per minute, 8 champions played. Then like we said, I have we have Wink. And I will say, they added Jerry behind him. Which means, if there is... So, top lane, there's pressure. And then the bot lane... We have pressure. So Wink, 24 years old, 72 games played, 3-2 KDA, 68.9 KP, 228 damage per minute. That damage is obviously as a result of being so um, so aggressive. Those aggressive picks, I was talking about the 80 carry meta and things like that. He was able to really thrive. Um, 19 champions, Rakan, Nautilus, and Blitzcrank being his most played, 40% of his games. So two out of every five games. 
It was going to be a Rakan, a Nautilus, and a Blitzcrank. And the fact of the matter is, Draven Blitz, that's a nasty, scary lane. And that's how this team played. And we'll see with the new coach if, if that um, goes away or not. Jerry played with OMG last year. Um, he did not play at all in the LDL. So we only have two OMG games from um, spring to look at. A Vietnamese player, I believe. 22 years old, two games, 2.8 KDA, 90 KP, 143 damage per minute. And play a different champion in both games. But that was with OMG's main roster alongside Abel. So we have a guy that actually has LPL experience behind him. So Zhao Yuji and, and Jerry. That's a, a bot lane. Who knows? If IG struggle on that side of the rift, I could see them making a change. Long is the coach. Not super great career in uh, coaching. 52 and 90 uh, in best of threes. And then in the uh, playoffs, 6 and 11 in individual games. So this roster, not one of the stronger ones. We just went over FPX IG following suit in that regard. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And hope to see you again tomorrow.